So there's going to be two parts to this video, the solution and the explanation. If you just want the solution, here it is. This is how you can uh, prompt for somebody to enter a valid IP address. And if they don't enter a valid IP address, it's going to keep asking them. So let's run this bit of code right here. You'll see it says, please enter a valid IP. I can put in some gobbledygook and it's not going to work. I can put in a sort of looking um, IP address. Maybe I fat fingered a key and press enter and it's still not going to work. You have to put in a valid IP address. So 10.10.10.10. Thank you. And that is the code that you can use right there in order to get it. Uh, if you're familiar with PowerShell, then all that stuff, you can look at it, figure it out and say, oh, that's very clever. You know, I'm going to use that or I'm not going to use that. But if you're not familiar with PowerShell, we're going to break this down into a lot of little pieces so you can understand a bunch of different concepts in one bit of code. I think this is a really great example to do that because it shows you a lot of different elements in PowerShell. Um, so let's look at just the, the outer shell of this script right here. We have a for loop and a lot of times in, in many different programming languages, you'll see um, to create an infinite loop, you would have to uh, create infinite logic essentially so in most for loops you'll see the four and then it, at the start here you'll see like i is equal to zero and then like i is um less than zero or something then i plus plus and then it never reaches uh it's gold in the middle here i don't even know if that was valid or not but uh for you know for the people that understand you understand that uh, but to create a infinite loop in powershell all you have to do is just put the two semicolons. So very simple. If you want to create an infinite loop, then you would put the four, the two parentheses, and two semicolons. And this thing is going to run forever and ever and ever until you tell it to stop. And we do tell it to stop somewhere in the script in our true statement here. So when this if statement is true, uh, we have it write host to thank you. And then it uses this break and it breaks out of this infinite for loop very simple so we have validation here we have this if statement and if this statement is true if we enter a valid ip address then we're going to break out of it if not we're just going to say invalid ip we tell them what they typed in and we loop back again so let's look at this validation here there's there is a lot going on here if you're not very familiar with powershell i know at the very start for me looking at something like this was very daunting and, and I couldn't quite grasp it. So we're gonna break this down. Uh, PowerShell parentheses works like algebra. Uh, everything in the internal parentheses gets solved first, and then it creates a sort of new element from that solution. And then that element is passed up to the next parentheses. And then that is solved until there is no parentheses left and you're left with a uh, final object. So let's look inside here. We are asking the user to enter an IP address and they can enter in anything they want and it gets turned into a string and we pass it in here. And then you'll see this right here. It says IP as IP address. Well, what, what is happening here? Let's talk a little bit about some simpler stuff first. So in PowerShell, everything is an object. Let's take a look at this. We're gonna output this one to the screen. And it's just a one. It's one, right? One, simple, okay? So let's send that one to get member to take a little bit uh, more depth of a look at, at this object. Boom. You'll see that there is more going on in this object. Get member is kind of like a magnifying glass that lets you see all the details of the object. So this is in system.in32. It's an integer. It's the type of this object is a uh, integer type, which is basically a number uh, with with certain limitations to how large and how small it can be. We have methods which are uh, kind of like actions that we can apply to that object, but we don't need to worry about that. So let's let's do this. Let's highlight this bit of code, which is very similar up here, right? Like I have this variable object and we're casting it as an IP address. 
Let's cast this one as a string and see if it looks different. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look different. It, it outputs a one onto the screen. But if we send it to the magnifying glass to get member using the pipeline, we can see that it is very different. We have a lot of different methods here. And when we scroll to the top and we look at the type, it is a system dot string. Now strings are usually uh, used to compose um, a, a number of characters together. They can be letters, they can be numbers. So this is a string right here. We have a bunch of letters together and we're asking the user to enter a string. Uh, so when, when we use this as, it's essentially a magic wand that lets us change an object to a type of our choosing. So when we use this as, we, we can change the type. So there's there's lots of different types. This is called a type accelerator. If, you, um, if you've ever talked to developers, well, if you've ever talked to developers, you probably jumped off a cliff and you're not watching this video. But if you've ever tried to look into development, you, you probably know of the .NET library, which is essentially a very large toolbox in the Windows operating system. And so they have these very long names to, to call these types. And um, so they'll have, you know, this one is system.string, but essentially it is a string value. And PowerShell exposes these .NET types to you in a very quick manner called a type accelerator. So all you have to do is in case one of those types inside the brackets and it gives you access to those types and there's lots of different types another very simple type is the bool it's a boolean value which is either true or false it's either off or on and so let's take a look at casting different numbers as a boolean value and see what happens as you saw we could change this one object to a string what happens if we try to cast this one object this integer as a boolean value so we're gonna run that and you'll see that shows true okay so what if we do six let's do the number six that that is true as well because booleans they they're either true or false they're off or on they either exist or they don't exist so um let's do zero aha now we have a change we have false and that is because PowerShell interprets zero as non-existing. It, it is null. It, it, is, it is not. So it is false. But what happens if we do negative one? You'd think maybe you know, everything less than zero is, um, is false. No, that is true because it is, it is something. It is not nothing. Zero is nothing. It is, it is false. It doesn't exist. There is nothing there. It is null. Uh, so that kind of shows you a little bit of, of, of how the bool works. It shows you how the type accelerators work. It shows you how you can use the magnifying glass to see more about those objects. And you can see that objects can display the same way on the screen, even though when you get closer and look at them, they're very different. So let's take the example that is at the very top. We're working with IP addresses and you saw that there was the IP address type accelerator. So there must be IP address objects. Now let's take this and try to cast it as an IP address object. So we'll, we'll run this and we're gonna assign it to this variable. Boom, let's take a look at test. Or let's, let's use get member over here. So we're taking a, a magnifying glass to this and you'll see that it's not a string even though you know this is a string but then we use the as and we said we want this string as an IP address type and if we look here like I said if you dig deep system.net.ip address there is a type for that and there is a type accelerator for that as well so when we run this we don't just get the string we get a whole bunch of values that are associated with that type. And there's, there's other ways that you can use this that's outside the scope of the video, 
uh, but it's uh, it's an interesting type to go and look into. Now, what if we try to assign an IP address that is outside of the scope of IP addresses? There is no 400. IP addresses go from, uh, or the values in each octet can go from zero to 255. So if I put 400 in here, let's see what happens to this variable. Okay, so we have test two now. Test two is assigned. And if we run test two with get member, oh, we get, we get an error mess. No object. Test two does not exist. There's no object associated with test two. It's, it's nothing. It's, it's null. It, it, it doesn't exist. Okay, so if we, if we understand that logic, then let's, let's try to cast test two as a Boolean value, right? Very similarly, if you put the type accelerator in front of a variable, it's, it's the same thing as using as. We are, we are trying to turn this into this type. So when I run that, test two is false it's false it doesn't you can't do that there's this does not there's no ip address type that can exist in this format so what happens if we try to do the same thing with test we'll put test over here and run it aha now it's true because this value over here can exist as an IP address object. And so now we have a way for testing whether a string is a true IP address or whether it's not a true IP address. So all of these examples that show how objects can look the same, but they can be very different how you can take an object and you can cast it as different types to be represented in different ways and how you can take values, assign them, and then look at them closer. We can go back up here and we can break down this, which may seem very confusing if you're not familiar with all that stuff, but turns out to be very easy. So we're taking this string value, the value that I typed in, when it asked me and we're converting it to this IP address object. Now, if this is a valid IP address, this, this parentheses will turn into a valid IP address object. If this is not a valid IP address, it will turn into nothing. And so in turn, this object because it is in, in it, it's in front of this boolean value this will be interpreted by the next parentheses just like algebra and so if if it's not a valid ip this will be nothing and the boolean will turn to false and so this if statement will be false and it will execute the else, invalid, enter a new one in red, because red means you were wrong. And if this is a valid IP, this will turn into an IP address object. This block will return true. So this will all return true and it will say thank you. And it will give you a pleasant green thank you to let you know you were right. This semicolon separates the two lines of code and then it will break out of the script and you can continue forth with your script using this IP variable and you will know that it's a valid IP address. So that's a very, very long winded way of explaining how all this is working. And that's it. Thanks for watching.